Hello, hi, hola, Blender 2.83, I promise, it's in here, I keep chasing it around. You know, lately every time I've been installing Blender, it installs in a brand new folder, so I have to get a brand new spot to install it. Is that happening to you too? Now, just by doing that, I've accidentally opened two instances of Blender, so you'll give me a moment to... I've corrected that, and now we have one done. Okay, default screen. So, Blender Shorts. I want craters, because I wanted to take a look and see if I could do this with uh, the Vornois texture. 2.83 has a couple of extra interesting things that I wanted to explore, and there's so many, just an impossible number of new things. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in 63, and I'll make that make sense in a second. So many new things for new users to take part in with Blender, but it can be really confusing. So you'll see that 63 cuts makes, look down here, 64 faces. So now we've got 64 by 64. And then when I subdivide this surface, it will subdivide into familiar powers of two. So it will become... Uh, you know, 128 on a side, 256 on a side, etc. And then I can go and change it to a simple so that the corner straightens out. So the texture we're going to play with is the uh, Vornois texture. And you can, with Node Wrangler enabled, see what one thing does compared to another. We're after distance. So I'm actually going to use distance to control the displacement because it will give us really good craters if we're careful, I think. So I'm going to change the vector to being a displacement vector and then suddenly, suddenly nothing happens because the settings account for bump only. But if I do both displacement and bump and render it in the view, and this should plug into height, where typically it doesn't. So you've seen ocean waves and sand dunes and things like that. So why don't we take the uh, color of this, which is essentially what this gray is, take that information and try to manipulate it with a color ramp, perhaps, and affect where it bottoms out. And so where it bottoms out means we're beginning to fill the valleys. You can see it filling right there. I could turn off that overlay by clicking here to turn off all overlays, or I could simply opt to not outline the selected. And if we want more fidelity, then we change the viewport subdivisions. And now we have um, like four times as many or whatever. And moving the high point down, we'll begin to clip the high points. And you can see that these are kind of not really circles. And we could look at it and invert it by flipping the color ramp. And we see that they have points. And these points are kind of obnoxious, if you ask me. With Node Wrangler enabled, I can click Shift S and change this node, this, uh, this node that I'm on, into an RGB curve. Now you've got to bear with me, because we're sort of looking at a profile of that dip. So you have to imagine this is half of the dip. And we're looking at a cross section of half of that dip. And if I round it out a little bit, now, since I'm rounding out the profile, the actual shape begins to round out. And this is especially useful because maybe you don't want little valleys of computerized nipples everywhere. So control scrolling allows me to uh, move the X and Y coordinates of these vectors and I can change the handle type from auto to vector handle. Here's auto and so of course it, uh, it rounds out the, uh, the path through that vector and if I just click vector handle it doesn't so that's useful. I wouldn't mind adding a little tiny vector right here and that was control left mouse click and I'm going to raise the Y up slightly and then another one here and I'm going to lower that I can do this now it looks like uh, formerly bubbles in mud this is the beginning of things of how to make half decent craters I think and if we covered a surface uh, that was large you would have lots of little craters and if you wanted to have lots of little craters moonlight craters of different depths and such like this then you would definitely want to uh, reduce the scale so that it's not so wicked. 
the different depths are controlled by the uh, Fournois texture. You know, somewhere I'm going to squeeze this in. This works really well on an array. This this geometry has an array modifier and it has four as the count and you could put this array modifier in front of the subdivisions or after the subdivisions. Um, the uh, problem that you see here is because I physically lifted the geometry. I created three vertices to come up with proportional editing which means they came up in a soft dome and that dome rather ruined everything. So if I tab in to edit mode, look at all the faces and select them all and look at it from overhead and I press U and I decide to unwrap this from the view using bounds, what it will do then is if I go to UV editing you can see more clearly it will create this mesh which is a perfect um, square on square because our original mesh was a square. So back into shading, the shading workspace here, even in object mode I can instruct the Vornois texture to not do its default but with control T you can see the default is generated. I can simply use the UV map. What the UV map does is straighten out the effect over the uh, over the bumps that I've raised, but it will break the connection between arrayed pieces. Unfortunately, it's not acting on the entire geometry. It's now acting on each individual um, each individual instance of geometry. Finally, if you wanted to turn this into a physical displacement, because right now it is the illusion of displacement, um, this is not physically displaced. If you remember the outline of the selected, the outline is razor sharp flat because we did this on a plane. If you wanted this to become a physical, uh, in 3D space, a physical, displacement then what you would have to do is render this out flat and I think I could do that for you so give me a moment to set that up so I look through the camera I go to the camera's settings I change it from perspective to orthographic I change its orthographic scale to begin at one but I need a square render and now it won't matter if I move the camera back. What will matter, however, is the uh, orthographic scale. So I'm pulling the scale and it's 10. 10 sounds fair. And I'm going to center that camera by putting the X and Y to zero. Now a render will show shadow because it's still the illusion of a bump and it's lighted instead of producing its own light. <clears throat> so, I'll remove the illusion of displacement. I will remove the light. And I will change this with Shift S to a shader from diffuse to emission. And now it provides its own light, its own strength. And it is exactly as you designed it. You could do it 512, and then you know you're going to be dealing with uh, pixels in the crater bumps. You could go and change this once you're satisfied with everything to uh, whatever higher resolution satisfies you. You could adjust the contrast here or in another program but essentially you would then load this as a displacement modifier and you would get a physical displacement. This Blender short is making material nodes make sense, and that is that portion right there. The rest of this we can make make sense if you have questions. Happy blending. I'll see you soon.